I'm a big fan of museums. Every time I travel to a city, I try to uh, find out the best museums I can find. Um, and last year, I visited Paris, France, and I ended up at this museum. Anybody know where this is? This is the Louvre Museum in Paris. It's a beautiful museum, three floors, many buildings interconnected. Um, I stumbled upon this location accidentally, and I noticed something very strange about it. Every moment I looked at this wall, there were people walking away from this wall or around it. There are five beautiful paintings on this wall, uh, and the strange thing was that nobody was walking towards the wall, which begged the question, um, uh, what is happening on the other side of this loneliest place at the Louvre Museum? And if you look, there are 300 people on the other side, and they're all trying to catch a glimpse of da Vinci's masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. Um, the wall is an interesting place. I think it epitomizes a type of internal fear that we all have. The question of what you're working on today, whether it'll stand the test of time, whether what you're focused on will matter in the long term. It's not about fame or fortune. It's about impact. It's about beauty. It's about creating something of value. So I ponder on this question uh, quite a bit of how to end up on the right side of the wall. And I can tell you, having gone through two days of our content, you probably are quite excited, you probably have a few ideas of your own. So let's talk about how to develop those ideas. At Singularity, we are in a privileged position to see folks such as yourself who come to our program, see the content, and then they emerge excited, inspired. And we can also see what happens after they leave. So this is really a bit of our pattern recognition on uh, what works and how to try to end up on the right side of the wall. First step, uh, and there are many uses for a logo. Uh, <laughs> the first idea, and I think this is something that da Vinci Michelangelo uh, would agree with, is the notion that your reach exceeds your imagination. The biggest risk is not to think big enough. Uh, fast forward a year from now, when you reflect back on today, uh, most likely you will regret things you did not attempt, projects you did not decide to work on. So keep that in mind. Recognize that there might be a glass ceiling above your head about what is possible. When you attempt big projects, uh, then failure, uh, risk of failure is also big. I always joke that I've never done anything well that I hadn't done badly first. I think da Vinci would agree. The photo, the picture on the right is a painting uh, that is attributed to da Vinci, and it is now known as the Isleworth Mona Lisa. Uh, it is something that is believed to have been painted by da Vinci 15 years before the actual Mona Lisa. And uh, you can tell that there is an order of magnitude improvement over the course of that 15 years. There is a good lesson for all of us here, great reminder that it is okay to start small and fail and uh, get the failure out of the way, get the badly done first out of the way. Uh, da Vinci is also known to have attempted up to 15 projects at the same time. And in doing so, he epitomizes the notion of a portfolio approach to innovation. This is something that I really uh, believe in, and I think it's great if you are shooting for 10x, if you are aspiring to create big change, to attempt big innovation projects, it is a good idea not to put all your eggs in one basket and take inspiration from da Vinci to take on a portfolio approach. Uh, most importantly, da Vinci also had something else. He had a platform. A platform is a place where people get you. People understand what you're about. They understand how you think about the world. And I think it is fair to say that without Renaissance Italy, we wouldn't have da Vinci. So while he had it in, in Renaissance Italy, we, he had this platform. Uh, my belief is you have such a platform in Singularity University. It is the type of place where everybody speaks exponentials. Everybody believes in the notion that there are technologies that are growing at an exponential pace, 
and the opportunities are there for 10x innovation and moonshot thinking. So next time you think about uh, your masterpiece, your Mona Lisa, think of Singularity as a platform, because together, chances are, we can paint a better picture. But let's talk about you. If we have done this right, by now, by this point in the conference, this is what you should be feeling about. This is how you should be feeling. A little excited, uh, energized, uplifted, and to a certain extent, optimistic. Um, but if you think about how your world, the world you're going back to after today, is going to react to your energy, uh, you realize that some of your behavior is going to register as threatening. If the current way of doing stuff at your organization uh, could be a TV box, let's just use the analogy of a TV box, this is really how your behavior is going to register. There is fire, there is destruction, and your innovative, disruptive ideas will feel quite threatening. So really, the first pattern we have noticed in folks emerging from singularity is to make sure you manage emotions. Managing emotions, recognizing emotions. The second concept is a lot of folks will think of your 10x innovation, disruption ideas as uh, a gamble. In a sense, you need to manage their perception of risk. The truth is, in order to have 10x innovation, you do not need to take on 10 times the risk. That's the beauty of exponentials. So being intentional about managing expectations is another cornerstone of your path to success. Similarly, this is how a lot of folks will think about your budget. Uh, utter waste of money, potentially. And a lot of folks also associate 10x projects with 10x budgets, 10 times the cost. So there's another opportunity to be sure to manage perceptions around cost. It does not take 10x to attempt a 10x project. Similarly with time, their notion of your timeline and how long it will take to realize some of these projects uh, will be quite skewed. So another recommendation is to think about managing time, perceptions of time. Even if you do all that, chances are many of your ideas will be shattered. And this points to another opportunity uh, for a portfolio approach. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Start small and scale it from there. Managing your portfolio is going to be critical. Uh, first and foremost, though, I want you to uh, have this model of what's happening to you and what will happen to your organization after you, you return. I love this video. As the eagle approaches the water, you have no idea what the target is. You know there is intentionality, but you don't know what the target is. And it reminds me of the following quote, intelligence is hitting a target that nobody else can, but genius is hitting a target that nobody else can see. In a sense, you have all emerged from our conference uh, more of a genius than you were before. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact that you are now seeing targets that are not accessible to other people back at your organization, back in your world. And you need to be very cognizant of how you communicate your vision and how you gently bring them on board. To that end, we have a four-step program that I am recommending to you. I would start with education. It was Kennedy who said uh, that success has many parents, but failure is often an orphan. Uh, it is very, very important to make sure you're not the only person in your organization who speaks exponentials, not the only person who looks at the world through this lens. If you are, chances are you will just look a little crazy. But if you can build that critical mass of people around yourself, folks who get it, folks who understand that hidden target, then that is a strong predictor of how successful you will be. So begin with education. Then focus on ideation, very concrete ideas that are grounded in the reality of your world. Tend to have a lot of leverage, tend to give you a lot of leverage for securing budgets, securing resources to attempt a 10x project. It has to be grounded in your reality. So spend time on ideating specific ideas. 
then incubate those ideas. Uh, even if you are 100% convinced that the future of your world, your business, your organization, whatever it is, is going to be very, very different and needs to benefit from a certain idea, my recommendation is to take those ideas, de-risk them away from the core business, away from the core of the organization, incubate those ideas in the way startups are incubated. And then finally, once the de-risking has taken place, you can leap the organization and take it to the next level because folks will see the value for it. This is exactly what Singularity has done in creating its product roster. We have educational programs that are customized to the needs of organizations that work with us. Our custom executive program is quite popular. We do around 80 of these in the year. We also have a digital version of it. We also have conferences such as this one. The point is you want to first educate a critical mass of people, and then you can join our labs. At Singularity University Labs, ideation, incubation, and leap happen. In ideation, we bring together faculty, experts from Silicon Valley, uh, as well as uh, folks from your organization. This could be done remotely. It doesn't need to be done in person in Silicon Valley. Uh, we bring everybody together to brainstorm on very specific ideas that could be relevant to the future of your organization. And then in incubation, we have a series of programs where you can test those ideas in a safe environment. You can prototype, you can imagine what your world will look like if those ideas are realized. And finally, Leap is uh, the opportunity for you to transform your organization through exponential organizations, behavioral design, and a few other elements. So this is the full portfolio. And if any of this resonates, please uh, do count on us as a resource. There's a link at the bottom uh, that you can check out. You can fill it out, and somebody from my team will get back to you to explore partnership opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you.